I love you. These must be three of the most difficult words to speak. I remember the first time I said these to a girl and it was both terrifying and exhilarating. It's what I imagine jumping out of an airplane must be like. You get the courage to thrust yourself out the door and then you hang there wondering if the parachute is going to open or if she's going to crush your vulnerability and send you plummeting to the ground. This is the love I, that we so often think about when we think about love. This is the love that is sung about in ballads, that's written about by the poets. It's the love that's the challenge for teenagers all over the country. And while romantic love a love motivated and fueled by emotions does appear in the Bible. When we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, the love that Paul talks about, the love that we recognize comes from God, it's a different type of love entirely. In 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 7, John writes, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. In Greek, the word for this love is agape, and it refers not to an emotional romantic type of love, but instead to a love that is intentional, to a love that is an action rather than a feeling. This is the love that God has for his creation. This is the love that God has for us. And when we claim to be followers of Christ, when we put our lives in alignment underneath God, when we become part of his family, the result of that relationship that we have with God, the result of that rebirth, that new life that we have through Jesus' death and resurrection, is the bearing of fruit. And the very first of those fruits that Paul lists is love. It's because all of the other fruit of the Spirit flow from that goodness, kindness, patience. It all comes from agape love, the love that we reflect because the love is the love that the Father has for us. This is an intentional act that allows us to understand verses like love one another, not simply those who are easy to love, but those who are our neighbors, people that we don't like, people that we actively have challenges and difficulties with. God doesn't give us a pass on loving just those who are easy, but instead he directs us to love our neighbors and actually says that if we do not have love, we are not born of God. Now our reaction might be to say, you know what, they haven't earned that love. You don't know what they have done to me. But the truth of the matter is none of us has earned the love that God has for us. And so the challenge today as we begin looking at the fruit of the Spirit is how can we reflect the relationship that we have with Christ in our interactions and our relationships with one another. And the first of those is to turn love into an action. Love your neighbors, love your enemies, love your friends and your family because this is what God has done for us and continues to do for us. God is love. And because he has first loved us, we too love one another. Go in God's grace today.